Welcome to Microbeast version 3, step G. This was a fun step. I really enjoyed making it. Turn on your transmitter, then the receiver. Let the Microbeast initialize. Since we can't use subtrim on our radio to set the servo arm square, step G allows us to do that in the Microbeast. Once the Microbeast is initialized, press the button until the A light goes solid. Now press the button a few times until you get to step G. When you get to step G, the status light will be off. When the status light's off, the microbeast sends a neutral pulse signal to the servo. In other words, it's at its normal center. This is when you want to mount your servo arms as close to square as you can get them. Now you can move the rudder stick either direction. As the status light changes color, you'll see one of the servos bounce. This indicates you can adjust the center of that servo. When the status light goes off, all the servos return to their factory center. If you adjust a servo, the microbeast remembers where you put it, and it will be there until you change it again. I've set the light to blue because I'm going to adjust the blue servo, or channel 3. I'm using a template I made that lets me get the arm exactly square to the servo. To adjust the servo, move the elevator stick up or down. The microbeast will stay on this servo until you move the rudder stick, so take your time. You can always go back to a servo and readjust it if you have to. If you plan ahead, you can do this step before you install the servos in the model. I set the status light to red, but for this next step it doesn't matter as long as it isn't off. I'm going to use my laser pitch gauge to do this, but you can use any swashplate level you have. First I line up the inner ball with the outer ball above the blue servo. We're going to use it as a reference because I know it's square. I shine the laser on the wall and mark that point with a marker. I put a blue background on this to help you see which servo we're working on. Now remove the link from the blade grip and get a piece of blue painter's tape. Hold the link over the ball and use the tape to fix the grip so it can't move. Like I said, you can use any swash plate level you have, but I think if you watch this, you'll see how easy the laser is to use. Now just tweak the grip until the laser shines exactly on the mark. Now rotate the head until the same inner ball is lined up with the outer ball that's hooked to the purple or elevator servo. Put a mark on the wall exactly where the laser is shining. Now rotate the head so the same inner ball is lined up with the red servo. Mark that position. When we're done, we'll have three marks that are on the wall on a plane exactly perpendicular to the main shaft. Turn the head and check to make sure the laser travels exactly over all three marks. Now hook the control rod back up to the blade grip and take off the tape. Now the swash plate will be controlling the angle of the blade grip. If the swash plate isn't level, the grip will rotate and the laser will be off the mark. Now turn the head so the inner ball that's connected to the blade grip with the laser lines up with the outer ball that's hooked to the purple or elevator servo, channel 1. Move the rudder stick until you have a purple status light. It doesn't matter which way you go as long as the status light ends up purple. Now take your time and use the elevator stick to adjust the servo so the laser shines exactly on the mark. Now turn the head again so the inner ball that's connected to the blade grip with the laser lines up with the outer ball that's hooked to the red or channel 2 servo. Flick the rudder stick until you have a red status light.
and use the elevator stick to adjust the servo so it lines up exactly with the red mark. Now carefully rotate the head to make sure the laser shines exactly over all three marks. You can go back to any servo that's off a little and adjust it again until they all line up perfect. At this point your swash plate should be perfectly level. Adjust your pitch rod so both grips are at exactly zero pitch and if your model has adjustable phasing set it per the manufacturer's instructions. Now I move the rudder stick so the status light turns off. This ensures that all your work is saved. Step out of the setup menu and power down. In the next video we'll cover steps H and I, setting your swash plate type and getting your servos going in the right direction. Up until now that hadn't mattered, so please subscribe. I would appreciate it.